Hi, Emily. Uh, shalom, Mor. Shalom from Toronto. Hi, hi from Israel. How are you? I am okay. Nice to meet you online today. And we have, uh, I feel very interesting uh, conversation about a future of remote work and about actually what Remote Work Institute you uh, represented can offer in this regard. Excellent. I'm looking forward to having your this discussion with you. And I also try to tie it with the, your business as well. So looking forward to this discussion. Uh, thank you. First of all, I would like to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Emily Braun, and I am owner of International Lifestyle Consulting. Uh, it's a small boutique company uh, who offering uh, information and consultation about future of uh, remote work or current situation of remote work. And I am working uh, with uh, remote workers with employees, people, as well uh, as this organization who are looking uh, to improve the uh, work with uh, remote work options. I'm located in Toronto, Canada, and I'm uh, mostly working uh, with American and Canadian uh, organization. And I know that more uh, and Israel actually can offer a lot of uh, real experience uh, of working uh, in remote work mode, uh, please uh, more tell us about it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Emily. Um, so Remote Work Institute is a, about a year old organization. Um, basically what we do is we help companies or, and organizations with a strategy and specific consulting and training related to remote work optimization. Basically, um, uh, since COVID started, a lot of companies moved to either fully remote or hybrid of remote and office time. And uh, there are uh, quite a few uh, benefits that comes with it, uh, but there's also challenges that comes with it. And uh, we help organization basically address what is the best policy when it comes to remote work, what is the best policy for them and also how to address the different challenges and train their uh, employees to be uh, as professional as they can uh, while working remotely. And uh, I would love to share some of uh, our ideas and best practices today with you here. Thank you very much. I'm, uh, uh, I would be happy to, to hear it. And I believe uh, other people who would be following this uh, uh, interview would be it would be beneficial for them as well what 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 can you share with us in regards to uh, best practices let's start from it um well before we even talk about best practices i'd like to start with talking about what's the uh, benefit of uh, remote work really is um so um you know, uh, one thing is to work remotely when you have to do that. When, when it comes to COVID, a lot of companies simply had to work remotely. Um, but, uh, you know, I've been in this business since 2013, and we've been uh, advising companies on working remotely since then. And even now we have uh, companies that, um, now that uh, COVID is getting uh, kind of under control, they uh, they want to go back to the office and uh, and uh, what we would like to to highlight first is what are the benefits of remote work because uh, while it's not hundred percent fit for every company uh, it has uh, some uh, good potential for many of the companies so let's start by uh, talking first about the employee so we have actually three types of benefits of remote work. One is to the employee, another one is to the employer, and the third one is for everybody, for the environment. So uh, we'll talk also briefly about that, although a company doesn't really 
changing their policy uh, towards the environment necessarily, but it is good to, to know that you are in the right direction and you can support the environment as well. So let's start with the employee first, okay? Um, so um, what we hear, and, and we do a lot of research and we also talk with a lot of employees and uh, you know, these days uh, there's a lot of research done also uh, by other companies. We hear uh, very strongly that a, a large proportion of employees, they prefer the option to work from home or, or the option to work remotely, not necessarily from home. And, and, uh, and the reasons are few. The, the first one, typically is the flexibility and the ability to basically uh, uh, stay less time on the road, okay? And uh, more time spend with your family uh, and, uh, and at home, uh, whoever you are with uh, in need. So this flexibility and this uh, uh, time saving, now in, you know, with, with the traffic jams and such, uh, people waste a lot of time commuting to the office and, uh, and if they can work remotely, that could be a big saving for them. And I'm not even mentioning uh, those who have to uh, travel uh, all the time when they go to meeting with customers and sometimes they have to fly to those meetings or drive uh, long hours to those meetings and such. And now they can become a lot more efficient so that uh, kind of uh, um, the, the more uh, business oriented, uh, you know, reason. Um, so, so um, again, few, let, let me kind of uh, go over the list that I have here and I will uh, be more specific. Um, you know, uh, more, uh what I see in uh, our publication, and I'm following some uh, on the European side, more and more companies speaking and actually following, offering hybrid model when, uh, uh, you know, some people can work from home and another can work uh, coming to the office. I hope you will cover this model as well. Yes, yes, absolutely. So again, um, whether it's a hybrid model or fully remote model, still there is the remote work component in it. And uh, indeed, uh, uh, all the benefits that I'm, I'm saying are applicable, whether you are a fully remote or whether you are a, a part-time remote, okay? But, but the main reasons are, again, if you look at the uh, business perspective, is that you have more satisfied customers that, uh, sorry, most custom, uh, satisfied employees, that's the first reason. Absolutely. And, uh, another reason is uh, business continuity. Okay, so uh, obviously COVID was a good example, but you have other uh, cases where uh, you can't come to the office. And, uh, and if you have this ability for people to effectively work from home, then you can work uh, in cases where you have, uh, you know, storms, uh, fire in your area, etc., some of the other, uh, you know, even in, in some extreme cases, uh, earthquakes. Uh, so people cannot travel and cannot commute, commute to work, but they can work from home. And that's what's called business continuity. Um, there's a lot of efficiency that is driven by uh, spending less time on the road and less time traveling by air. Uh, some of those salespeople that used to have, uh, you know, one or two meetings per day uh, before COVID and before they work from home, now they're able to do four, five, six sometimes meetings per day. So they are a lot more efficient and uh, can achieve more. Um, it's also, uh, there's also results uh, that shows that you can increase productivity uh, by, by working remotely. Um, a lot of time people in the office, they also waste a lot of time. There's a lot of uh, small talk in the office. There's a lot of uh, distractions in the office. 
and uh, and sometimes uh, people are able to produce more and be more productive when they work from home. Um, the, another benefit for the employer is cost reduction. So mm -hmm. you can uh, basically reduce your cost by, uh, um, again, uh, over time, you could uh, reduce your real estate uh, square feet or whatever it is. You could uh, uh, spend less on travel and on flying and hotels and everything that's associated with it. Um, so, uh, and, and you can, by the way, also hire people uh, that are uh, less expensive. So if you are located in one of those uh, high demand areas, let's say uh, New York, uh, Los Angeles, uh, you know, uh, Bay Area, et cetera, uh, those uh, employees there are very expensive. Uh, but now if you can hire people uh, from rural areas, okay, from Arkansas, from, I don't know, uh, Wyoming, all those places where it's uh, less populated and, and the, the, the uh, cost per, per employee is lower, then you can reduce your cost uh, significantly. And now if you are also willing to go international and hire people from another country, then you are even going to uh, reduce your employee cost uh, much more. Even. So again, a lot of benefits uh, uh, when it comes to cost and also a lot of benefits when it comes to a uh, talent. So again, I spoke about the, the, the cost, but you know, some areas are very hard to find the talent that you wish to get. And now when you can expand your, your talent pool globally, you can find people that you would, would never be able to hire. And if you are looking for some specific engineer or some specific expert, uh, now you can expand the search globally. It's what actually I observe in, in the publication. I just republished a couple of days ago articles that Google actually saved one billion over the last year of remote work. That's why they're giving the employees the opportunity to continue to work from home. From other side, I know about several companies who already located or in uh, Latin America or in Europe who actually uh, are coordinating the work between American clients, companies, and professional uh, skilled workforce in Eastern Europe, in Middle East, in Asia. So more and more opportunities actually uh, today open before companies. They just need to know how to, how to manage, how actually um, how to use this opportunity and have the, uh, the work uh, smoothly uh, for management as well for employees. And here, I understand your company uh, has something to offer. Yes, thank you. Yeah, absolutely, I totally agree. Um, and again, the last point that I started with, uh, the environment and the society as a whole, as a whole uh, can benefit if we, we work more remotely. And again, I'm not necessarily say 100% remotely. The hybrid model is very effective because uh, people do need to go to meet face to face sometimes. Um, so, uh, so there is a lot of benefit. And, and of course, some of the work uh, cannot be done remotely. So that's a given. But again, if we had more, more companies offering more options for uh, employees to work remotely, uh, then we could see impact on, uh, we could see positive impact on the environment because uh, a lot of uh, less people would spend time on the road, uh, meaning a lot of less pollution, a lot of less stress for the people, etc., cetera, et cetera. So, um, uh, and by the way, uh, real estate uh, uh, going to also be affected by it because now you can buy a house in a, in a, you know, in the suburbs, in a, in a place where it's far away from the city because you don't have to get to the office every day and you can enjoy a better lifestyle. So many diff benefits of remote work. Um, and now I'd like to talk also about the challenges of remote work, if you don't mind. Yes, obviously in this period of change, uh, some challenges would be inevitable part of our life. But I think this correct understanding that 
uh, the challenges are temporary and they can be overcome, they should be overcome, uh, it, it will get uh, uh, our listeners more confidence about future of remote work. And just a couple of points from my side, when you mentioned that a uh, hybrid model might be good for some people, uh, I was immediately thinking, as mostly I think from the people perspective, uh, sorry, uh, who might benefit? Like I know that young people, uh, you know, singles, uh, young employees, uh, sometimes living in crowded condition or small apartment, if they live uh, close to the office, they would prefer to go to office, you know, for team um, atmosphere. If other people, uh, like small group, will be working uh, at the same time as well. I know some people who have say small children at home. They don't have a quiet or you know a comfortable situation, office situation. They, they would prefer once or twice a week to go to the office. So I think this uh, hybrid model giving opportunity to different kinds of people living in different situations uh, to have this life work balance if they prefer to do it. Uh, so now, uh, yes, I, I'm uh, uh, the mic for you, please. <laughs> yes. So um, what, what are the challenges uh, of uh, remote work? So again, we, um, we talk about uh, uh, the employee's perspective and the employer perspective. From employee perspective, um, one of the main challenges is uh, the, the lack of social interaction, okay? Uh, people feel lonely, people feel, feeling isolated when they work from home. Uh, one of the benefits in the work environment, in an office environment, is that you can talk to people, meet people, uh, you know, chat, and things like that, which are, uh, you know, hard to do on, on, uh, when you do remote. But again, I will, when we talk about uh, best practices, we'll talk about how we can overcome these challenges. Yeah. Uh, the other one is uh, um, collaboration. So a lot of time people feel that when they work remotely, it's hard to collaborate with people. Um, comparing to uh, the way you collaborate with others when you see them face to face. Uh, also, there is the uh, visibility disadvantage situation, and this is more relevant uh, to situations where some of the people are in the office and you are remotely, okay? And so when you are remotely and some of the people work in the office, uh, a lot of time there is what we call visibility disadvantage. Uh, so, you know, what does it mean? I am not clear. Like, so, so uh, you are far from the eye and therefore far, far, far from the heart of the people. You see what I'm saying? So people that are remote are not exposed uh, as a, they don't have equal opportunity to, to be engaged with the boss, with the manager as people that are in the office and they sometimes uh, they miss on certain communication that they just don't get access to when they are not in the office and uh, a lot of time people think about them oh he's at home he may not be actually working as hard and things like that so um, there's a lot of uh, uh, preconceptions and, and disadvantages of being remotely simply because you are not there in the office and people don't see you, okay? Um, another challenge is setting boundaries. Okay. Um, uh, people that work from home uh, sometimes fall into the trap of working endlessly um, and, uh, and basically in order to prove that they are uh, you know, that are indeed effective and they, they, they are not uh, slacking, then they basically take phone calls all the time, even if they are now uh, with their families and they, even if it's uh, overtime, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, and the boundaries between work and home uh, becomes a problem. So we'll talk about that. Okay. And lastly, there is the issue of technology. So again, uh, some, although I would say this is the least of the problem, the least of the challenges, but some cases 
um, you know, technology and infrastructure at home does not allow you to work very effectively. Uh, we will talk about that as well. So in this case, I think people moving on, they, they're looking for location with a better Wi-Fi, with better internet connection. I mean, uh, these uh, technical issues which can be here and there. By the way, technical issues might be even when we are working in the office. From my experience, I remember there were a couple of times even shut down in big organization. So I, I feel from what you mentioned, so actually the main uh, I see issue, it's a changing mindset. Yes, mindset maybe uh, from management perspective, uh, trust more employees working from home, obviously following, you know, uh, the KPI and other uh, deadlines and for employees uh, kind of to find this work-life balance. I'm very interested in, in your experience. And, yeah. your and, and so again, so far I focused on the employee side, but let's talk about the manager perspective. Okay. Managing from remote is definitely harder, okay? And not everybody is equipped with the, the, the uh, knowledge and the experience to do that effectively. The challenges are uh, first, uh, how you track productivity. So, um, you know, uh, some of the traditional manager, they, they basically, uh, you know, feel that if you're in the office and, uh, and they can see you uh, working, then they know that you are actually productive. While in fact, you, even in the office, they don't really know what you do and how effective you are. Exactly. But then when you work for remotely from home, that becomes a, a bigger challenge, of course. How do you track productivity of employees? The other topic is uh, team spirit and motivation. Mm -hmm. How do you keep you know, uh, the team engaged um, and uh, motivated and working effectively together? That's a, a big of a challenge um, working remotely. And uh, lastly, the, the uh, uh, engagement that you do with the, your customers and third parties, okay? How do you do that effectively? So uh, these are, uh, and also professionally, um, this is, these are all kind of challenges that managers are concerned with. So what you and your company are offering, and please kind of uh, clarify in what form are you offering and working with the companies, like webinars, like meetings, like how you, you provide your services and consultation services. Yeah, so um, again, we work with management teams and uh, HR teams on setting up uh, policies related to remote work. And then uh, most of the work is actually working with the uh, teams of employees uh, with workshops in which we kind of uh, first educate them um, and then uh, create a program with them uh, to set the goals for improvement and, and, uh, and monitor that over time to make sure that it works properly and overcome any challenges, uh, ongoing challenges that they are facing. Okay, so you're working with both sides, like from the organization, from, with management and uh, with employees, kind of uh, bridging uh, the efforts from two sides. Okay. Yes. So now, if you don't mind, I'd like to share with you a few uh, slides um, oh. that talk about some of the best practices. Um, so let me try to do that. 